So I've been talking the last few times about, uh, you know, monastic life, and many of these themes will come up during the EMO course. Uh, but one of them I wanted to talk about today is, uh, you know, because when you live in a monastery, as monastics do, or should do, then um, you live with a whole variety of people who, if you lived in lay life, you probably wouldn't know. Or if you knew, you wouldn't like. <laughs> or, <laughs> or you wouldn't associate with. But here in a monastery, you're living with them. Not just living, you're doing everything with them. Okay, So it's a very good practice for... Um, learning to deal with our anger, with our impatience, with people doing things differently than we do. Imagine that. With people thinking differently than we do, with people coming from different family backgrounds, different religious, ethnic, racial backgrounds, whatever it is, um, you know, we're living with a variety of people. The thing we have in common is our uh, our faith in the in the Buddha Dharma Sangha, and our practice and our virtuous aspiration to attain awakening. Yeah, but all the, and and of course our clothes and our haircut. Okay, so we all look alike. Are we all alike? Mm, no. Okay. So it sometimes happens in a monastic community that you don't like somebody, okay? And you could probably write a treatise about all of their faults. You know, like Chandrakirti's, uh, you know, big, you've seen Jhumpa's translation, this big. You could probably write something about whatever is wrong with that person. They are like this. They do this. I don't like that. They have this habit. How come they do this? They're so stupid. They don't make sense. They don't, you know, listen to me. They don't respect me. They don't appreciate me. <clears throat> um, you know, and we go on and on with all of their faults, uh, you know, and we even will arrange it in syllogistic form so that we can do it when we debate and prove to other people why it makes total sense that we don't like them because they're such a beep, 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 you know, yeah. And, and you, you have your syllogisms and you present them and then, yeah, that's why I don't like that person and you shouldn't like them either. Uh, so that makes living in a monastery so much fun, doesn't it? Yeah, because your mind is totally shut down against this person. I don't like this person. They get angry. They don't listen to me. They're a complete phony. Yeah, they're wearing robes, but they're not really a monastic in their head. Yeah. Oh, they don't keep their precepts well. Yeah. No, they look like they keep their precepts well, but actually they're not. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they're jealous of me, so of course I have to be jealous back. You know, I can't let the, the jealousy just remain like that. Yeah. Yeah, if they're jealous of me, it's only fair. Yes, that's why I'm jealous back. Yeah, because they have this privilege and I don't. And I have to do this and they don't. And, you know, yeah. Yeah, you, so, so each day you increase your, the pages of the manuscript of your draft treatise about why you hate somebody. Okay. So that's nice. You've done that. Yeah. What are the results of that? Well, we came here because we want to uh, develop the path to awakening, don't we? Isn't that our ultimate wish in our heart? We want to become a fully awakened Buddha. Yeah. 
So, uh, have you ever heard of a Buddha who hated any somebody? Yeah. What do you say, Buddha? You look so peaceful. Yeah. Inside, are you saying, I can't stand that person? You know? Those Brahmins who came and, you know, asked me questions, they were so troublesome. And those long haired mess, um, ascetics, why don't they cut their hair and clean themselves up? You know? And those guys who came, uh, you know, the monks who came groveling on the floor, th pretending to be dogs so that they would use up their dog karma. Oh, why don't they just get up off their feet, you know, off their paws and act like a human being? Okay. I don't think that the Buddha has those kind of thoughts. So when we hate somebody, or even we don't hate them, because it's really not polite to say we hate somebody. And we, we've got to pretend. We're the ones who pretend. We've got to pretend that we're good Buddhists. We don't hate anybody. But that guy's just a jerk. That's it. Yeah. And that's why I don't like him. And I'm totally, uh, you know, uh, the teacher said it's a free world. You know, we're in America, there's total freedom. I can hate whoever I want to hate. I can dislike whoever I want to dislike. Yeah, and I can create an impediment to my own Buddhahood. All I want to, it's a free world. The more people I can't stand, the more people I think are who are phony and insincere and obnoxious and liars, yeah. The more I think that, the further I am from generating bodhicitta. Without bodhicitta, impossible to become Buddhist. Okay. But then we look at our teachers and we say, oh, I have so much faith in my teachers. Look at the Dalai Lama. Yeah, he's so kind, he's so compassionate. I want to be like him. Yeah, you want to be like the Dalai Lama? When I was giving a talk in, in one Dharma center, they asked me who my, my model was, my role model. And I said the Dalai Lama. They weren't very happy. They expected me to say Tara. <laughs> As if the two were different. So... You know, I want to be like the Dalai Lama. I'm sure the Dalai Lama also doesn't like this person. I'm sure the Dalai Lama sees through all of his ego trips. You know, he's so arrogant. Yeah, so egotistical. I'm sure the, Dharma, the Dalai Lama sees that and just is nice to him because... Well, yeah, the Dalai Lama maybe has compassion, but he still knows that guy is, is a jerk. Yeah. So I want to be like the Dalai Lama. It means I don't have to change anything. I can still continue to dislike this person and say the Dalai Lama is my role model. I want to be like him. You think the Dalai Lama looks at that person you can't stand and has the same opinion of them that you do? You think the Dalai Lama has that same dislike, that same, uh, oh, you know what it is? Well, you think his holiness is omniscient. So I, I'm like the Dalai Lama, I'm omniscient too. I can see that person's state of mind, and they really are so out of touch with reality, so insincere, yeah, so arrogant and angry, yeah. So, yeah, so I'm developing omniscience, yeah, because I know that person's state of mind. Mm, you do? 
but somehow that still isn't matching up with the kind of compassion the Dalai Lama has and the kind of compassion the Buddha has. Yeah? So who, when we dislike somebody, and we wouldn't mind at all if they got hit by a truck, who is getting harmed by that way of thinking? We're the ones, aren't we? We're impeding our own spiritual progress. We may call the other person a jerk and obnoxious, but who's the jerk? Who's the arrogant one who thinks they're better than everybody else? Uh, who's the jealous one that wants to uh, take away somebody else's happiness? Yeah. So, you know, holding on to this kind of attitude in a monastic situation, uh, where it's like shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah, we're the person who is the one who is damaged by that, and we are impeding our own spiritual progress with that kind of attitude. Yeah? So it's not like we can say to ourselves, oh, I shouldn't feel that way towards him. You know? Well, we do. But we have to use the mind training practices. We have to use the long run. Yeah, and to understand why are those projections that we're putting on the other person, you know, should not be a cause. Well, first of all, the projections, we don't even know if they're real. And second of all, even if that person did have the problem, are we free from that problem? You know what I've noticed is one of the things that I criticize people the most for are qualities that I know very well I have. Yeah, and so knowing that, you know, seeing my that own fault in myself, I'm an expert at identifying it in other people. Can I change other people? Uh, no. Who's the one I can change? This one. Okay? So it, what happens is we keep coming back to, you know, when we have a deluded mind like that, yeah, we're the one who's suffering from it. We're the one who is not seeing the reality of the other person who is a suffering sentient being. We're the one who's projecting faults. Yeah. We're the one who's ignorant of our own shortcomings. Okay? So when the Buddha, at, you know, had monastics to live together, of course one purpose was to support each other in our practice. Yeah? And it's through living together that we see, we come to see very clearly what aspects of our own character that we need to work on. Yeah, when we, you know, as a lay person, you can hang out with all the people you like and the people who like you and the people who agree with, with all of our opinions. But those people aren't the ones that we, we need to practice patience with, that we need to develop fortitude for. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the, the other people in the monastery are really our objects of compassion, and it's up to us to generate that compassion and see why they are worthy of compassion. And remember, compassion is not pity. So it's not that person is such a jerk. Ugh. But I have compassion for them. I pity them for being such a jerk. Yeah. It's really not their fault that they're so obnoxious. So I have com 
pity and compassion. That's not compassion. You may call it compassion, but it's not. Okay? So it's not that we feel sorry for the people we don't like. Yeah. Because those poor people, they haven't met my standards of perfection. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it's it's not their problem. This is all my problem. Okay? And since we want to practice the path, we want to become like the Buddha, we want to become like His Holiness, then, you know, the Buddha and His Holiness have taught us everything we need to know about how to counteract this judgmental, critical mind. Yeah. So it's our time to practice it now. Yeah. And when we practice it, we may discover that some of these people that we don't like now are actually quite nice people. Yeah. We might. Can you imagine that? Yeah. Discover that they're actually quite nice and they can be friends. <laughs>